Okay, here's a lesson on section 8.2 using the cosine law. So we're continuing with chapter 8 on um, trigonometry of acute triangles. In uh, section 8.1, we learned about the sine law, which you can use to help solve for unknown sides or angles of an acute triangle. Um, today we're going to learn about the cosine law, um, which is useful in two scenarios when working with acute triangles, and I'll explain those in just a second. Okay, um, so first of all, this is the cosine law right here. There are three equations we can use depending on what is given to us um, in the question and what we're looking for. Similar to the sine law, where we had three ratios, okay? So this three isn't just an arbitrary number, of course. Um, you might think there are three equations we could use here. Because there are three sides in a triangle, three angles in a triangle, okay? So depending what side we're looking for or what angle we're looking for, that depends on what equation we're going to use. Just like with the sine law, there are three ratios of sides over the sine of the angle because there are three sets of sides and angles, okay? So before I explain this cosine law any further, um, I'm just going to explain to you when we can use it, so hopefully you can um, make sense of it as I explain it, okay? If you guys want to see a proof for the cosine law, I would be more than happy to show you guys one. Um, just let me know and I'll post one, okay? So like I said, there are two scenarios you can use the cosine law. Okay. when working with acute triangles. Remember, we're not working with right angle triangles anymore. Right angle triangles, you use SOHCAHTOA. Um, you can't use SOHCAHTOA with acute triangles. Acute triangles, we can only use our sine law and cosine law. Okay. So, when can we use the cosine law? Two scenarios. Today, we're going to be looking at just the first scenario. Okay. You can use the cosine law to find the missing side of an acute triangle if the other two sides and their contained angle are known. So if I know two sides of a triangle, I know this side, I know this side, and I know the angle contained by those two sides, so the angle between these sides, the angle at the vertex of the two known sides, okay, so if I know the contained angle of the two sides, okay, so I know two sides, it's contained angle, and I'm looking for the other side of the triangle, the only one that I don't know, okay, I can use the cosine law. Okay, so let's look at this cosine law here. So I'm looking for, okay, if angle B is here, this is side B. If I'm looking for side B, I would choose the equation that has side B at the, at the beginning, okay. I'm looking for side B. I know side A, okay, I know side C. Okay, side A and side C. I know the other two sides. I don't know side B, but I know the other two. So I can plug in for there, 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 and there. And then I know the contained angle. The angle contained by side A and C is angle B. I know angle B. So I can plug in for every variable except for side B and solve for that unknown variable. Okay. If I was looking for side A, and I knew sides B and C, and the angle contained by B and C, which would be angle A, I would use this oops, or I would use this top equation here. Okay. So it depends on what side you know. Um, yeah, it depends what side you're looking for and what sides you know. That depends on, on which of these equations you're going to use. But make sure um, when when you're choosing to use the cosine law, make sure you know two sides and a contained angle. Or like we'll learn tomorrow. Make sure you know all three sides and you're looking for a contained angle, okay? If you, if you look at the cosine law, you can see why that would work because if we don't know an angle but we know the other three sides, I know A, B, and C, okay? I could plug in for all the known sides and my only variable left would be the angle. I could solve for the angle, okay? Um, and also one more thing before we get started. We'll do a couple examples. Um, before we do those examples, though, don't get bogged down with um, the letters here, A, B, and C. Triangles aren't always going to be labeled A, B, and C, but that doesn't mean that the cosine law doesn't work. Like, let's say our triangle was triangle D, E, F. Okay? What the cosine law tells us, if we know um, two of the sides, okay, so if I know these two, I know side D, and side F, and I'm looking for side E, okay? The cosine law tells us that if I'm looking for E, that's going to be at the front. E squared is equal to the sum of the other, the sum of the squares of the other two sides that I know. So I know the other two sides. One of them is 8, 
the other is 7. So if I add the squares of each of those and then subtract twice the product of the known sides times the cosine of the contained angle. So I would have had to have been given this angle here. Let's say that was 30. So cos 30. Okay. So look, if I wanted to find side A, I know that A squared is equal to uh, so if we're, I'm just going to find side A, I would have had to have been given side B and C and their contained angle A. Okay, so I wanted to find A, I would add the squares of the two known sides, I would subtract the product of the two known sides, double, sorry, I would subtract double the product of the two known sides times cosine of the contained angle. Okay, so that was a lot of talking before we got started. Let's do a couple examples and hopefully it'll, it'll be easier than it sounded. Okay. So let's do example one here. Okay. Um, find the missing side length. So I want to find side A. You notice I didn't tell you that we're going to use the cosine law. Um, you're going to have to be able to recognize that yourself. Okay. I have two sides and a contained angle. Okay. I have this side, this side, and their contained angle. Angle 61 is contained by the two known sides. And it's asking me to find the third side. I know. This is scenario one of when we use the cosine law, so I'm going to use the cosine law. I'm looking for side A, so I'm going to use the equation that has side A at the front. Okay, so let's just jot down what we know. So we don't know side A. I know B equals 18. I know C, cross from angle C, is 21. I know angle A equals 61 degrees. Okay, all I do is plug all that information into my cosine law. Okay, so I don't know A squared, that's what I'm solving for. I know B, B is 18, so 18 squared plus C is 21 squared minus 2 times the product of the two known sides, 18, 21 times the cosine of the contained angle. The contained angle is angle A, cosine of 61. Okay. Now all I do, let the calculator do the hard work. My calculator knows how to do bed mass. Okay. So I'm just going to put in exactly what I see here. As long as I use the right operators and brackets in the right spots, okay, my calculator will do the work. So 18 squared plus 21 squared minus double the product of the two known sides. Um, actually, I'm going to write, um, I'm going to use the multiply by button instead of the brackets, times 18 times 21 times cosine 61. I use the multiply button just so it doesn't get all convoluted with so many brackets. Okay, But it would have worked out either way. Okay, Then just press equals. So I know my a squared is equal to 398.4839271. Okay, I don't want to round this yet. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put 398.4839271. And now to solve for a, I have to take the square root of that. So you probably won't write this step here. Okay, you'll probably just now on your calculator do square root of that answer. So second negative brings up square root of answer. Enter 19.96. So I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. Okay, it'll become 20.0. 20 20.0 centimeters. Don't forget your units. Okay. All right, let's do another example. For this one, um, first of all, let's, it's asking us to find the missing side length. It's asking us to find B. I'm given two sides and to their contained angle once again. I know I can use cosine law to find the third side. Okay, so let's figure out which cosine law formula to use. We're looking for B, so we're going to use the formula B at the front. So we know if we're looking for, if we're looking for B, we're going to add the squares of the two known sides, then subtract double the product of the two known sides, multiplied by cosine of the contained angle. Okay, so Let's go ahead and do that. So I know, I'll jot down what I know again, um, just to keep uh, just to keep it the same here. So I don't know B, but I know C is 5. 
C is 5, A is 7, and angle B is 45. Remember, um, side C is opposite angle C, side A is opposite angle A. Okay. Plug in what you know. We don't know B. That's what we're solving for. So B squared is equal to A squared, so 7 squared, plus C squared, which is 5 squared. So those are the two sides that we know. Minus double the product of those two known sides, multiplied by the cosine of the contained angle, which is 45. Okay? So I know B squared is equal to, let's do this on our calculator, let our calculator do all the work here. 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 7 times 5 times cosine of 45, close my bracket, enter. So that's what my b squared about, um, is equal to, 24.50, oh, 24 24.50252532. Okay. You're probably not going to write that step. You're probably just going to go right to the next step where you just do the square root of that. Okay, Just make sure you don't round that. Okay, So do the square root of your answer. And you, you should get 4.95. Okay, Round that to the nearest tenth. That rounds to 5.0. Okay. So now we're going to move on. Okay. Um, next example, example three. This is one where um, the triangle isn't labeled triangle ABC. So um, the cosine law is still relevant just because the three general equations we're given have um, are assuming the triangle is labeled A, B, and C. We can generalize this formula to make a cosine law um, for this question here. Before I jump to any conclusions, though, I should just determine whether we're actually going to use the cosine law. Okay. Find the missing side length, so I need to find side D. I'm given the other two sides and their contained angle. I know in that situation I use the cosine law to find the third side. So I'm looking for side D. So to find side D, I know the unknown side squared is equal to the two known sides. The squares of the two known sides added together, so 4.7 squared plus 3.3 .3 squared minus double the product of the two known sides 3.3 .3. oh that was an ugly 3.3 .3. 4.7 times 3.3 .3 times the cosine of the contained angle 39 okay so I just generalized that equation to find the unknown side okay I find the sum of the squares of the two known sides. Okay? And I subtract double the product of the two known sides and multiply um, it by the cosine of the contained angle. I then put all this on my calculator. Okay? And let's see what we get. So 4.7 squared plus 3.3 .3 squared, 3.3 .3 squared minus 2 times 4.7 oh no not 427 4.7 times 3.3 .3 times cosine of 39 close my bracket equals that's what my d squared equals okay my d squared is equal to 8 Point eight seven two nine three two two seven six. I'm just writing this out for your benefit, so um, you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Then to solve for d, I square root that answer. Square root the answer. And I get two point nine seven. If I round that to the nearest tenth, I get three point zero. Okay. Three point zero centimeters. Don't forget your units. I think I may have forgotten them for the last question. Yeah, 5.0 5 millimeters. Okay, so don't forget your units. Um, that's it for using the cosine law to solve for an unknown side if we know the other two sides and their contained angle. Next lesson, um, I'm going to show you how if you know the three sides, find find one of the angles. Okay, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. 
See you guys.